Squeezing, milking, whipping, locking, pulsing, twisting. If you have a vagina, these are just some of the skills that you can master. And they aren't just impressive. Pelvic floor training is correlated with an increase in female pleasure, orgasm intensity, and libido. And still, there's astonishingly little information about vaginal training out there, aside from basic Kegel moves. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to shed some light on the biomechanics involved in this practice we call pompoir. Expect to learn how your vaginal muscles work together to milk your partner in the midst of passion, or squeeze your favorite vibrator to stimulate your cheese spot, or twist your fingers to one side and the other. Welcome to Gripology 101. I'm going to divide the topic of vaginal biomechanics into two parts. The first part is going to cover muscle anatomy and why we train muscles using a variety of different exercises, the types of muscle contractions and how peak tension varies between exercises, the main movements of a muscle throughout the three anatomy planes of motion, and the two types of muscle fibers and how to effectively train each. And in the next video, we're going to dive into the concepts of muscle damage, mechanical tension and metabolic stress, and how to combine these to design an effective workout, different muscle abilities such as endurance, strength, power, speed, and mobility, and how to prioritize them in your training, and finally, how to design an optimal pompoir training program, taking everything we learned into account. But first, a small disclaimer. Even though we've been using our vagina since the beginning of humanity, we still know very little about its biomechanics. So we're going to attempt to understand our pelvic floor's muscles' ability to contract, squeeze, pulse, milk, lock, and twist by comparing it to the largest muscle in the human body and one that we've been studying a lot more. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Big, big booty, but you got a big booty. Oh my gosh, look at her butt. Yep the glutes. As always, I'm going to be referencing all the papers I mention in the description of this video so you can find out more. I've personally seen the lives of countless women transformed by mastering pompoir, so if you want to join our step-by-step -step program, go to goddess.com. Remember, I am not a doctor and this should not be taken as medical advice. Nonetheless, if this happens to inspire people who are much smarter than me to design studies around these types of workouts, then I'll be doing my job. So get your notepad ready, because we're about to get nerdy. Yes, science! Muscle anatomy. Just like the glute muscles consist of the gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus, our pelvic floor muscles consist of the levator ani and the coccygeus muscles. And the levator ani structure, which is the main muscle group in the pelvic floor and the one we'll be mainly working on when doing pompoir or vaginal training, can be further divided into the puborectalis, the pubococcygeus, and the iliococcygeus muscles. Why is this important? Well, there's a reason why when we train a muscle, we use a variety of different exercises. Actually, I should say there's a number of reasons. But one of them is the fact that different exercises will be more effective at stimulating the different parts of a muscle group. For example, the Romanian deadlift will be best at targeting the hip-extending muscle fibers of your gluteus maximus, while the banded hip abduction will be especially effective for the gluteus minimus, and the Bulgarian split squat will fire your gluteus medius as it will be working to help you stabilize. The best way to know which regions of a muscle are being stimulated with a particular exercise is through EMG or electromyography. For the pelvic floor muscles, these tests have only been run to assess the effects of pelvic floor training in the reduction of urinary incontinence, for which the results are overwhelmingly positive, by the way. But there's not a study to date showing which regions of the levator ani are the most stimulated with each unique pump or exercise. Nonetheless, our prediction is that they vary, just like it happens in other muscles. Pulsing will elicit a stronger response in certain muscle fibers than rubbing will. What we call a level 1 contraction will probably fire up the lower pubococcygeus, and a level 3 contraction will fire up the upper pubococcygeus. Types of contractions Muscle contractions can be defined as the generation of tension within muscle fibers. 
Contractions can be isotonic, which means they generate force by lengthening or shortening the muscle, or they can be isometric, which means they generate force without changing the length of the muscle. Isotonic contractions can further be divided into eccentric contractions when the muscle lengthens and concentric contractions when the muscle shortens. For example, when you squat, you're lengthening your glutes. This exercise emphasizes the eccentric part of the move and your glutes are at peak tension when they're fully lengthened at the bottom of the squat. In pompoir, the same is true for the moves where we focus on the releasing or expelling part of the contraction. This is the case for the milking technique and eccentric contractions. On the other hand, when you're training your glutes and you perform a hip thrust, you're shortening the muscle. This exercise emphasizes a concentric portion of the move, as your glutes are at peak tension when they're maximally shortened. Most exercises in pompoir are also concentric in nature. Side isolations, staircases, sucking motions. Now, isometric contractions can also be further divided, but let's keep this simple. As we said before, an isometric contraction generates tension without changing the length of the muscle. For example, if I ask you to do a lying glute bridge and hold that position for 30 seconds, you will definitely feel your glutes firing, even though you're not moving. In pompoir, we use isometrics when we ask you to hold a long contraction or a lock. Some of these girls, you should see them, oh my god. Muscle movements. To understand the different movements of the body, health professionals often refer to the three anatomical planes. We've got the frontal plane, the sagittal plane, and the transverse plane. And we can divide the vaginal canal in the same way. The coronal or frontal plane divides the body into front, the anterior, and the back, posterior. Movements that happen across the frontal plane of the body are the abduction, as in moving your limbs away from your body, for example, a hip abduction, which works the glutes, and the adduction, as in moving your limbs towards the midline of your body. In this case, it would be the eccentric portion of the hip abduction, returning your leg back to its natural position. The same is true for the vagina and pompoir training. Movements that happen across the frontal plane of the vagina are those involving the lateral walls of the vaginal canal. They are involved in the skills of squeezing, tilting, and locking. Next, the sagittal or longitudinal plane of the body divides it into left and right halves. Movements that happen across the sagittal plane are flexion, as in decreasing the angle between two body parts. For the glutes, you perform a hip flexion when you raise your leg to perform a high step up, for example and the extension, as in increasing the angle between two body parts. Back to the glutes, this is the case for the classic cable hip extension. You're increasing the angle between the hip and the thigh. As for the vagina, movements that happen across the sagittal plane are those performing an up and down or forward and backward motion. These movements aid in skills such as milking, rocking, and sucking. Finally, we've got the transverse or axial plane of the body, which divides it into upper, superior, and lower, inferior halves. Movements that happen across the transverse plane of the body are rotation movements. For the glutes, one of these would be the fire hydrant. For the vagina, this is the most complex plane to master, as it involves the simultaneous push and pull of muscle fibers learned while mastering the other planes to achieve the two greatest pompoir feats, twisting and ringing. Many of the unique exercises in pompoir, especially as they get more advanced, are multiplanar, which means they engage more than one plane at once. Muscle fibers. To finish our intro to gripology class, it's crucial that we touch on the two types of muscle fibers. Skeletal muscles are made up of a collection of individual muscle fibers and the different types of muscle fibers allow the body to perform a wide variety of activities. Type 1 muscle fibers, also called slow twitch muscle fibers, produce low power contractions over long periods and take a long time to fatigue. These are the main fibers at play when we're maintaining isometric contractions, which I spoke about before, but also stabilize our body, keep our posture and perform relatively low effort activities such as walking. When women are starting out with vaginal training, in some cases, it's a good idea to use Kegel weights. These tools provide some resistance to your pelvic floor muscles, and they can stay inside of you anywhere from 15 minutes to 5 hours, depending on the brand, as you go about your day. 
As you can imagine, this passive form of training, where you're continuing with your daily activities as these Kegel balls strengthen your muscles, falls into the isometric category, as your muscles are not actively moving while still being under tension. Therefore, we can assume that it's the type 1 muscle fibers of the pelvic floor that are being recruited here. Type 2A muscle fibers, also called fast oxidative, produce fast, medium power contractions and fatigue more quickly than type 1 muscle fibers. These are the main fibers at play for sustained power activities, such as fast-paced running or doing repeated lifts with a comfortable weight. In terms of vaginal training, most exercises will fall under this category. Mid-duration, intermediate power moves like whipping and milking are likely to recruit type 2A muscle fibers. These moves that require a bit more precision and less strength are generally great for slow, sultry sex and positions where the focus is on connection and intimacy like spooning or woman on top. Finally, type 2B fibers, also called fast glycolytic, produce quick, explosive, strong contractions and they fatigue quicker than the other two types of fibers. They are primarily used for rapid, powerful movements such as short, all-out sprints and one rep max lifts. While the way women utilize pompoir moves is highly personal, there are certain exercises that our students choose to pair with moments when sex becomes faster and more energetic. Sucking, pulsing and tilting are generally the preferred skills for such times, right before the peak of orgasm. So there you have it. There's a science to all of this and a reason our Pompoir program is structured the way it is. We want to optimize for functionality, which in our case means enjoying your sex life as much as possible. To this end, we'll incorporate moves that work through the different parts of your pelvic floor, reaping the benefits of the different kinds of contractions, working through the three anatomical planes, and taking advantage of the unique functions of each type of muscle fiber. If you're ready to get started on your pompoir journey, download our free beginner's guide at goddess.com slash free guide. I am ready to face any challenges that might be foolish enough to face me. I'll see you in part two of this video where we'll explain how to use all of these concepts to design an optimal vaginal training plan.